got our chickens today. They're over here in the truck. Just picked them up from the post office. There we are. Let me see here. Oh. Oh. There's the Cornish Cornish crosses there. Yeah, yeah, you guys are about to go out. Another 75 over here. Yeah, there you go. Hey guys, we're coming, I'm coming. Getting your brooder ready. Getting your brooder ready. Let's, we gotta get the brooder ready for him. So I'm gonna sit you guys down like so. Ugh, inside the brooder here. Put you in the corner. How's that look for you? Oh, I'm gonna shorten you up a little bit. You're a little too tall. So, if you can see inside the brooder, <laughs> I was gonna film it, but literally, it's made out of pallets <laughs> held together, screwed together with some 2x4s. This is, and the roof is literally a camper shell. And uh, the only thing I forgot to do was shut this window one night and Cat got in here and got some uh, baby chicks. But that is okay. So yeah, just use some spare parts. <laughs> just metal on the outside. Metal. Uh, you know, keeping it simple. And I got some old fans in here just to keep the air moving around in here for the chickens. Because it does get a little warm. I will start tossing some wood chips. I'm going to cover this up with wood chips. And then we will bring the chicks in. Check it out. So hot. Big old bag of shavings. Okay. Spread it out. Yes, yummy. Spread the wood chips. Fresh wood chips from Tractor Supply. You guys know the deal. And we just spread it out. Spread it out, spread it out. So what I like to keep your food on. Come on. Alright. Yep. I keep this old piece of wood in here to put their water on and their feeder on. Some sometimes it keeps the wood chips. Sometimes it keeps the wood chips out of the feed and water. Other times I don't worry about it too much. Give them a good bit. Got a heat lamp right here just in case they need it for tonight. They usually need it on the first few days of being here in their new home. Especially in the spring and the wintertime when it's cooler at nights. Right now it's pretty hot in eastern North Carolina. If you've ever been, it's rather humid, kind of miserable. And there we are. Now I will go grab the chickens. I will be right back. These chickens 
all came from Murray McMurray Hatchery. That's where I get my Cornish meat hens, or Cornish meat crosses rather. They're jumbo Cornish cross, excuse me. It's hot out here, my brain's not working. All right, little guys, you're free. I usually just pick up handfuls of the little bitties and let them free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You little boogers. You cute little boogers. Thank you, Murray McMurray, for sending these very promptly. They do good business. And if you ever have any issues, they take care of you. They have taken care of me multiple times. I appreciate that. Don't you go out the gate. No. Don't you go out the door. Get over there. Quit. Quit. I got another box for you. I got some more friends. Some more friends. That's all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Murray McMurray has been sending one extra chicken they always send extra chickens with my meat chickens but this one they've been sending extra hens and it's been nice I've enjoyed having different breeds and this one's a cutie all right all right you're free oh sorry buddy didn't mean to toss you you're free you're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. And usually there's one, maybe two dead in the box. That's par for the course. I don't freak out unless there's ten or more dead usually. That's when I start freaking out thinking I did something wrong. But we are good to go. Oh, don't step on them. Be careful not to step on them. Watch out, little chickies. Watch out. Move. I have a baby gate I set up in the door so the chickens can't get out. They like to get out. Sometimes your feeder comes apart, but that's okay. We'll just toss that right there for them right now. Now, I get them water. Watch out, little ones. I usually take one or two or three, take them, and dip their water in the beak. Dip their water in the beak. Dip, -dip, -dip, -dip. dip on in there. Dip on in there. You just take a five to ten of them, and then they all go, hey, that's where the water is, guys. This is where, the, this is where Daddy keeps the water. Daddy's got the water over here for us. Watch out, Daddy's coming through. Watch out, beauties. Watch out, little babies.
There you go, cuties. What y'all mean about? Here. There you go. There you go. There you go. Woo! Ouch. And that's how we set up our brooder. That's how we set up our brooder. Ah, it's, hot. it's hot out here. That's how we set up our brooder for our 75 chickens. I still have to grab another feeder for them. But that'll do for them right now. Watch out, loves. They're just really thirsty. Watch out, cuties. I can't pick up my leg that high. Ah! Yeah. Stop it. I like to pick it. No. 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 They like to try to sneak through. I'm like, you don't want to come out. This is your safe spot. There's kittens out here. These kitty cats will eat you out here. Uh-oh. I see a weak one, guys. This is... This little fella might not make it. I don't know. Usually I like to look and see... I've noticed the ones that aren't as spry right out of the box usually don't make it. Most of these look spry. And the ones that don't look so, you know, energetic, I will take them and put their put them close to the feed in the water and keep an eye on them. But usually I might have out of these 70 might have one or two that doesn't make it. But that's okay. And then I've had even, you know, 10 or 12 die in the brooder over the two, three weeks they're in the brooder. It's just the way things go sometimes. Uh, sometimes you have cats break into your brooder and eat your chicks too. We just had that. So, wonderful. Oop. I got my little makeshift brooder. So, this is the brooder. Boom. Or the little hobbit house, whatever you want to call it. But that's how we keep our chicks safe. And I'll check on those. When we first get them, I like to check on them frequently. You know, the first few days, just keep eyes on them. Making sure they're doing okay. And as you can see, we've got the gardens coming around as well guys so and yeah man chickens so shoo I uh I keep them in the brooder here for like two to three weeks and then they go from here to the lease land that I have where we have a few acres that we have chicken tractors on and we roll these guys every day so it's nice. I'm gonna go sit down. It's hot. I'm gonna cool off for a second. We'll talk soon.